thanks everyone for being here. Um, this is a joint work with um, Javier Jara from LSE, uh, Maria Cecilia Deza from Inter-American Development Bank, and Mariana Dondon, Javier Torres. Uh, Javier is from Universidad of Pacifico in Peru. Mariana is from uh, University of Rio Negro in Argentina. Um, the idea here is uh, we are trying to account for um, um, the tax benefit system, how the tax benefit system affects uh, the gender income gap uh, in, in several countries in Latin America. As Javier previously explained, we uh, have been building a, a series of models, uh, tax benefit system models for uh, countries in Latin America. Uh, currently, we are going to present, uh, today we are going to present some results for seven countries. Um, but we, we have models for uh, nine uh, countries uh, in the region. Um, the idea, uh, the main motivation here is that when we talk about uh, gender income gaps, we usually talk about wage uh, or earnings uh, income gaps. So uh, this is impo especially important in Latin America because, uh, as we know, uh, we have a lower participation for uh, women in the, in the, in the workforce. Uh, additionally, if they participate, if women participate in the labor force, uh, they are usually working in, an, in the informal employment sector. So, and, and we know that in the informal sector, uh, they are going to earn, a, 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 they are going to have lower earnings than uh, males. And the other uh, thing is that, well, uh, it, and this is true for uh, every country, I guess, uh, that we have this this gap in incomes in earnings uh, between uh, women and men. So the idea is, well, uh, we have this uh, like uh, problematic picture for, for Latin America, so we expect the, these income gaps to be higher here than in, other, uh, in more developed uh, countries. But the idea is we have the tax benefit models for the region, and uh, we want to see how the tax benefit alleviates uh, or improves this uh, or reduces this income uh, gap. So what we are doing here is uh, passing from uh, original income or market income to disposable income by means of this tax benefit system. The idea is that we uh, compute the original income, we apply uh, social insurance contribution, we deduct uh, the payments that uh, workers have to, to make of social insurance contribution, we add uh, benefits and we subtract taxes so we uh, end up with a disposable income uh, for each uh, of the um, of the people in, in in the service that I'm going to present next. So, what is the motivation here? So, we we expect uh, that the tax benefit system reduces this uh, gap uh, by means of two two ways. So. In the region, there are several programs that are allocated by the, by default to the mother. For instance, uh, as there are public here from Colombia, we have uh, Familias in Acción. Um, Familias in Acción is a, a cash transfer that is allocated to the mother inside the household. So this income is going to this transfer is going to be received by the mother. So this is going to reduce the the gender gap. And we have the same for uh, several countries in the region. In Argentina, Asignación Universal por Hijo uh, is, is, is the same, is allocated to the mother. Uh, Bolivia, uh, one of these bonos that they receive is allocated to the mother. Colombia, Ecuador, uh, is, is the same. So we expect this to uh, reduce the, the income gap. Um, sorry. In the region, if uh, the gender income gap in the region, and um, so what we uh, and the other effect that we want to test is the effect of income tax. We know that uh, uh, men uh, earn more, so they are going to pay more in uh, income taxes. So this is going to reduce their disposable income and. Therefore, the, the gender gap is going to be reduced. And so we, we want to see if these two effects are important and how much they uh, help to alleviate the, the gender gap uh, in income. Uh, OK, so the idea here is we have models uh, for Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Uruguay. We have also mo uh, the model for Mexico, but we are not going to include the, the results in this presentation. 
Um, we are going to analyze uh, 2019. Uh, for most countries, we have information um, for this year, except for Mexico, that we uh, use a similar method that was described before to update incomes from 2018 to 2019. Uh, but for most countries, we have information, a household survey data that we are going to use in the micro simulation models that uh, we are going to present. So the idea is uh, the, 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 the final result of this uh, research is going to present results for the period before the pandemic and the period after the pandemic. I'm going to show you only results for the period before the pandemic. Uh, okay, so what is the idea here? Uh, we have uh, three strands of literature in this uh, measurement of the gender gaps. So the traditional uh, idea that if, if you go to earnings, there are going to be discrepancies in the earnings between uh, women and men. So we have a, a, a very old literature there. The other uh, thing that we are going to consider, and I'm going to explain, explain this later, is that uh, maybe in intra-household, uh, the resources are not going to be allocated equally for all of them, for all members of the household. So, the idea here is we, we are going to, and I'm going to show you that we are going to allocate the resources to the, the, the earner, and we are also going to uh, show you uh, some results assuming that we are pulling incomes for couples and also for households. So the idea is uh, inside the household, uh, we have to allocate uh, these resources, and probably the best idea is not to allocate the, the, the sum of all resources to, uh, and, and divide it by the number of members in the household uh, and uh, assign this income uh, to all household, to all household members, but probably to, to have um, uh, the, the resources allocated to the person that is uh, earning, uh, earning them, mostly. And uh, most recently, well, we, uh, we, are, we are also building on, on the tax benefit systems that we have created. We, uh, Javier, uh, Javier and Rodrigo explained about uh, uh, Euromod. We are going to build on, on, on that. So the idea is like trying to combine these, these ideas uh, for, for analyzing the effect of the tax benefit system on uh, the, the discrepancy in earnings between women and, and men. So, uh, previous literature combining these three things, uh, we can find uh, papers mostly for Europe. Uh, we are going to follow uh, mainly Abraham and, Pop and Popova. See, um, um, that is here. So, we are, we are going to follow mostly this, this, this paper, but we found uh, other literature related. So, for instance, Figari analyzed the effect of the tax benefit system producing uh, these gaps uh, inside couples. And uh, Gallego Granado and Dorling King analyzed for, uh, in, in the first case for Germany and in the last case for Europe, the, the same. So it's, it's trying to see the effect of the tax benefit system. Uh, Dorley especially, uh, and King, they especially, what they try to do is to separate this gap, to decompose this gap into the effect of the tax benefit system and uh, the effect of differences in wages and also difference, uh, differences in hours of work between women and men inside the, the, the household. So what, what we are going to follow, especially uh, this Abraham and Popova uh, uh, paper. This is the, the, the main methodology. I'm going to explain uh, a bit how this uh, methodology works. So we have all these models uh, based on the Euromod platform. So they are freely available if you uh, want to access them. Uh, most of them are, are available through Southmod, uh, to the Southmod platform. And they are based on nationally representative household surveys. Uh, for, for instance, in Colombia, we have a Gran Encuesta Integrada de Hogares. And the idea is uh, we have built all the legislation, all the taxes, all the benefits, all the social insurance contributions uh, in top of this survey. So we can simulate, for instance, if we um, introduce a, a new cash transfer, for instance, in, in the pandemic, uh, Ingreso Solidario here in Colombia, uh, or maybe with the new tax reform here in Colombia, we can simulate how much uh, they are liable to pay uh, uh, in, in for each observation in, in the data, okay? So we have these models. Uh, 
this is like a description of the data, household surveys. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that the countries that we are using here are uh, very different between them. So, for instance, uh, the, the labor force participation is 46% in Mexico, but 71 in Peru. So the idea here is uh, there is a variety of uh, um, countries in our sample. So uh, I think this is important for external validity for our ex exercise because uh, if you want to, for instance, take another country from Latin America and analyze, uh, you, you can just compare with some similar country in, in this range of, of countries that we are presenting here. Um, so the idea here is I'm going to present three uh, sets of, of results. Uh, well, uh, the, the first one is a minimum income polling. So the idea here is that uh, suppose that we, are, we only focus on the earnings or, and the non-labor income uh, of each individual, uh, and we apply just the, this tax benefit system and, and compute what is the disposable income of, the, of this, uh, this person. The, other, the alternative is uh, intra-household. We pool the resources between couples. So, for instance, if uh, the male uh, in, in, uh, the, the, in, in the, inside the couple, a woman earns 100 and men uh, earns uh, 120, we pool this and the average is going to be uh, 110. So, and, and the alternative, and this is more, the, the, last, the last option is more related with how we measure poverty in Latin America is we pull the resources from all members of the household and we compute some, uh, um, so we, we found some uh, per capita income uh, inside the, oh, the, the household, not the couple, but inside the household, so including elders and including a uh, child. And the idea is, uh, we, in, in, in this first uh, is, is, uh, alternative, uh, minimum income pooling, the idea is we are going to allocate the resources to the individual uh, that receives earnings mainly, or for instance taxes. Taxes are paid mostly uh, at the individual level in Latin America, so you don't have to, uh, you, you cannot declare it jointly between husband and, and wife, for instance. Uh, so this is nice for us because the, the tax is allocated uh, directly to the person that uh, has to pay it. And um, social insurance contribution is the same. You have to pay uh, um, some percentage of your earnings a social insurance contribution. Benefits, uh, this is uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, we assign, for instance, if, we, if it's unemployment benefit, but the, the person in uh, that be, uh, become unemployed, receives this. If it's social assistance, uh, as we saw uh, before, some of these social assistance is allocated to the mother, for instance. So in, the, in that case, we, uh, we allocate them to the mother, but in other cases, uh, these social assistance are, um, are, not, are, are, are received by the household, but not by a specific member. So what we do here is we uh, divide uh, split equally the, um, the benefits a, um, among the uh, parent and, and mother, uh, so inside the, the, the household. Uh, the other thing that we do here is um, we have these incomes and we have to take into account that the household composition affects what this income is going to be used. So what we use here is a modified OECD scale. So the idea here is that we recognize that there are economies of scale in the provision of consumption goods inside the household. So the idea here is that we assign different weights to different members of the, of the household. Mm. The other thing is that um, we are, I'm going to present you some uh, statistics that uh, measure this gender uh, gap. Uh, we are going to use the income of uh, women relative to uh, the income of men. So the idea here is that if this ratio is above one, uh, the women are earning more than men. And if it's below, that is mostly the case, uh, uh, the idea is that uh, we are measuring with this with this ratio the, the, the gap. Okay, so and well, I already explained this. So let's see the the results. Then give a second. Okay, so 
the result. So remember, we have a ratio of one. It, that's the, the ideal. So a ratio of one implies that uh, men and women earn equally. Uh, this is disposable income, so it's after tax and benefit income. So what we see here is that, uh, and, and, and the other thing is that um, we have disposable income with uh, circles, and with squares we have market income. So for instance, uh, this ratio of uh, women to men um, income, uh, in the case of market income, so before uh, benefit and taxes, is around uh, 53 uh, uh, percent in Argentina, but with the, in, in the case of disposable income, is uh, is is above. Uh, so it's seven, uh, 67 percent. So it's the idea is here. The, the message here is that the tax benefit system reduces uh, this gap in, in income. So this is the case for most countries. The effect is bigger for Argentina, Uruguay. In the case of Peru there is a neg negligible effect of the tax benefit system. In the case of Colombia, the effect is reduced, but it's uh, not as small as Peru. Um, so these are results for all population. Here we are trying to decompose, uh, to analyze this gap uh, again, but considering uh, household income designs, here we are using disposable income uh, to construct these designs. And we, what, what we see here is that for the bottom of the distribution, uh, the tax benefit system reduces um, the gap uh, considerably. For instance, it reverts the, the, the gap in Argentina for the uh, first design. Uh, the, before the tax benefit system, this ratio is 0.6. But after the tax and benefit system, the effect is that the ratio is above one. So it's um, what we find here is that uh, women are receiving more disposable income than, than men on average. And the, the, the main message here is that this effect of the tax benefit system is higher at the bottom of the distribution. Uh, but in the higher part of the distribution, as you can see, in, several, in, in all, almost all countries except Uruguay and Argentina, um, the effect of the tax benefit system is almost null. Uh, the, the most important one is at the bottom of the distribution, and this is possibly because of um, this idea that the, tra the cash transfers are uh, mostly allocated to the mother inside the household. Uh, in this next set of results, I'm going to divide the population, the, the families or the households the households in, in our survey uh, and uh, the members of the household. So for instance, here we have working age. The effect is not as, as, as big as before. The, in the case of the elderly, uh, here the, the effect is, is, is strange because the, effect, the, the ratio with disposable income is below the ratio with uh, market income. So the message here is that uh, in the region, pensions are allocated principally, uh, contributory, contributory pensions are allocated mainly to the uh, men. So, and, and this, is, and this uh, result is historical. Um, the idea here is that uh, in the past, men worked, uh, men worked uh, more than women. They work in formal sectors, they accumulated, so they are receiving now a pension that uh, more often than women. So the idea is before the, the pension, we observe this ratio. And uh, before the, the pension, we observe this ratio. And after um, the pension, we observe that uh, the gap increases between women and men. Uh, here is another, another take of this idea that cash transfers are uh, moving our, our results. Uh, we see here the, um, uh, we divide the, the population and we have here couples with, uh, without children and we see that the effects are, uh, of the tax benefit system are very small. But we go to couples with children and we see that the effect is higher. So uh, this uh, uh, tell us that the effect is mainly driven by a cash transfer that are allocated to, to the mother inside the, the household. And in, in this other, um, in this last graph, the idea here is that I'm going to take the same definition of in, in, income by the individual level, 
In the second, uh, in the second uh, column, C, I'm going to allocate, I'm going to uh, join the income of the couple, and in the last column, I'm going to H, I'm going to uh, pull their, all the resources of the household. So here, the, the, the idea is that um, we have uh, also, uh, in, in, in this case, we have um, poverty for women and men. So this is not the ratio again, but this is the incidence of, incidence of poverty for, for women and men. So we see, for instance, here for Argentina, uh, that uh, if we take in co into account just individual incomes, we observe that uh, the poverty incidence is higher for women and lower for men. And if we join the resources of couples, so this difference disappears. And also, if we pull all the resources of the household, the, the incidence drops and is the same for women and men. So this is the, this is the, the main result. What we, what we see here is that if we uh, analyze these gender gaps at individual level, uh, it's going, they are going to be huge. But if we pull the resources between members of the household, uh, this, the incidence and the, the difference between uh, women and men are going to uh, be reduced. So uh, finally, the idea here is that um, what we found here, is the, the main measure is that pensions are important. Uh, they are allocated principally to men, so to elder men, and they are going to increase the gender gap. Um, Cash transfers are going to be allocated to mothers, so they are going to reduce the, the gender gap. And the other thing that we found is that the, the effect of taxes is uh, very small. This is especially true because in the region, uh, most of the people do not pay income tax, so the effect of taxes that uh, we discussed before is almost null for, for the region. And finally, the next steps is we are going to analyze this in the context of the COVID pandemic. In the COVID pandemic, in most of the regions, we have new cash transfers. We expect these new cash transfers to uh, reduce the, the gender income gap uh, because most of these transfers are going also to be allocated to the mother. So, but we want to quantify the, the effect of these new cash transfers uh, um, available only during the pandemic.